Good evening, everyone. Time for another member update. Now, this is the weekly chart of silver provided by netdenia.com. There's a new indicator that I'm looking at here. I just threw it on here just um, out of curiosity because there's some strange things going on right now. Um, this is the accumulation distribution. Now, let me read the definition real quick from Investopedia. Uh, a definition of accumulation distribution, it's a momentum indicator that attempts to gauge supply and demand by determining whether investors are generally, uh, generally accumulating, buying, or distributing, selling a certain stock by identifying divergences between stock price and volume flow. It is calculated using the following formula, and you can see that. There's the formula. So back to that indicator. Uh, this is a really amazing move in the indicator. What What's interesting about it is, uh, well, we don't have the historical data, but you can see the move with the uh, $50 high really is kind of a uh, just a blip on the radar screen. And then the drop down here is pretty big. But what's really interesting is uh, in this period right here of the... Uh, sub 18 price we'll call it uh, this this indicator has gone absolutely wonky look at that it's gone down to a negative 175 million and it swung all the way up to a positive let's put the um, arrows in here uh, so you can see there it swung up to a positive uh, 25 million from a negative 175 that's a 200 million swing in this indicator and this is the time frame just in this little section here really no price action what does that indicate i have no idea that is insanity something big really really big is on the horizon in silver and i think we're going to see that when we look at the the articles but the other big thing here is look at the MACD. You can see that rolling over in negative territory. So we're looking at the weekly MACD. We have that failed test right there to go into positive. Now we have this rolling over into negative. What are they going to do? Are they going to try to drive silver into new lows? Now you know that I... Uh, bought some some of the goats they actually have added more at jm bullion that's fine by me uh, that's a great deal i'm sure a lot of the stackers are looking to see if we get new lows here now i want to jump over to the main stories or story of the night is this chase thing there's two stories with chase there's the wealth watchman article i want to talk about and i also want to talk about this uh uh safe deposit thing but before i do that i want to play my office series video on on storing your silver this is one that i did this is actually office series three so it's really old uh, but it's it kind of sums up what we're going to be looking at in these stories so let's play the office series three um and then uh we'll talk about these chase stories hello again remember i told you i did exactly as you advised and took my, my 401k money and bought physical silver yes that was a smashing notion if i do say so myself well my silver has arrived and i'm going down to the bank and purchase a safe deposit box to store my silver why would you want to do that because I certainly don't want my valuable silver to be stolen by thieves. I see. So instead, you are going to walk in and hand your silver over to the pinstriped bandits in person? Why do you say that? If they declare a banking holiday and shutter the banks, how will you get your silver then? I don't know. And were you aware that in 1933, when they declared it illegal for Americans to own gold, they posted IRS agents at the banks and that you were not allowed to open your safe deposit box unless an agent was present? No. And did you know that today in the case where they declare an emergency 
you will not be able to remove any precious metals from your safe deposit box. Unless the government permits it? No. And were you aware? That in the state of California, they started stealing people's boxes by declaring them abandoned. Even though they were still current on their payments. You got to be joking. No. And they took the stolen property. And auctioned it off, without even making the owners aware of it. That's outrageous. Yes. So are you still willing now, to hand your silver over to these scoundrels? Well, since you put it that way. No. So now I'm not sure what to do. Where do you store your silver? Sad to say. But all of my precious metals were lost in an unfortunate boating accident. If you get my drift. Oh? That's terrible. Yes. I'm quite broken up about it. But you might want to consider getting a very large gun safe. And bolting it down to the concrete. And you could store your guns along with your silver. Guns? I don't like guns. You don't like guns you say? Do you like being robbed, beaten, raped, and strangled? No. Not really. Then I would strongly advise that you get yourself some guns. And learn how to use them properly. Well. I'm not real comfortable storing my silver at home, even with a bolted safe. What if someone forces me to open it? Again. That is where your guns come in. If you get to that point. It's too late for you already anyway. You might also consider hiding your silver. Or burying it. Okay well maybe I'll research how to hide my silver on the internet. I know that there is a wealth of information out there. Excellent. There are rumors. And they are only rumors mind you. Of people taking one way GPS tracking devices. And marking a location with them out in the hills. And burying their metals there. But if they are buried out in the hills. No one, not even the evil banksters will be able to find them except the person with the GPS coordinates. Precisely. Goodbye. Okay, so that's the Office series. I actually received a lot of heat on this one. Uh, people saying that uh, the IRS posting at the banks is a fake story. Of course, they're going to cite Snopes, but it, uh, I'm not going to debate that. But uh, there's a lot of truth to that, and that's definitely coming in the future. So let's get to the story here. This is really shocking. This is from the SHTF plan blog and I, I, I can't verify the truth of this story but I'm just going to uh, cover it here. This is Max Slavo, April 22nd. Uh, you can see it's 8,000 views, 58 comments, banned. Chase Bank says you can no longer store cash or precious metals in your safe deposit box. Last week we reported that a Citigroup economist said that quote we need to abolish currency like the US dollar or at least tax those who possess it. The whole idea made no sense unless of course you are a big government stooge whose end game is complete control over people's assets and a desire to track the purchasing activities of consumers. Now a new report from Paul Joseph Watson at Infowars.com suggests that this may well be the goal. It turns out that it's not just Citigroup who wants cash to be banned. Some JP Morgan Chase customers are receiving letters informing them that the bank will no longer allow cash to be stored in safe deposit boxes. The content of a post over at the Collector's Universe message board suggests that we may be about to see a resurgent of the old fashioned method of stuffing banknotes under the mattress. My mother has an SDB at safe deposit box, a Chase branch with one of my siblings as co-signers. Last week, they got a letter outlining a number of changes to the lease agreement, including this, quote, contents of the box. You agree not to store any cash or coins other than those found to have a collectible value, end quote. That's very interesting because my silver's uh, mainly Perth, so it's collectible. That's another reason to buy Perth. Anyway, continuing. Another change is that signatures will no longer be accepted to access the box. The next time they go in, they have to bring two forms of ID and they will be issued a four-digit PIN number 
that will be used to access the box then and in the future. The letter entitled, quote, updated safe deposit box lease agreement was sent out to customers at the beginning of the month. Hide your wallets, the banksters are on the move, warns Economic Policy Journal. The reasons for this new policy change should be clear and should come as no surprise. If you can't keep your cash or precious metals in a safe deposit box, what are you supposed to do with it? I, I think the question should be, why? what possible use do you have for a safe deposit box? I think the only thing they want you to keep in there is paper. Um, the answer is simple. You're not supposed to have cash or gold. You're supposed to keep your money in a zero interest, actually, no, a negative interest bearing account with your financial institution, either that or stuff it under your mattress. And this is where the scam comes in. First, bank tellers have now been ordered by the government to report on individuals making suspicious withdrawals of cash so that police can then investigate and seize the funds. Now, whenever banks suspect something suspicious is going on, they want them to pick up the phone and call the cops. Quote, we encourage those institutions to consider whether to take more action specifically to alert law enforcement authorities about the problem, who may be able to seize the funds, initiate an investigation, or take other proactive steps, end quote. So what exactly constitutes suspicious activity? Basically anything. Second, if they can't seize your money for lack of suspicious activity, they'll take a different route. You may think the money you have on deposit is insured by the FDIC or that it is actually your money to begin with, but the cold hard fact is that once you deposit your money at a financial institution, it no longer belongs to you. And that's why asset manager Ann Barnhart recently warned Americans should start taking their money out of banks because new legislation and regulations have ensured that all legal bank deposit protections are now officially gone. The marketplace is destroyed. You cannot be in these markets. All legal protections are now officially gone. All customer funds in the United States are now the legal property of JP Morgan, Goldman Sachs, Bank of New York Mellon, or whichever mega bank is the counterparty on the loan the FCM or depository institution takes out in order to fund its mega levered pro proprietary in-house trading desks. Now consider the implications of these new policies within the context of what JP Morgan Chase CEO Jamie Dimon said just a couple of weeks ago when he warned that an even more volatile crisis than what we experienced in 2008 is on the horizon. Some things never change. There will be another crisis and its impact will be felt by the financial market. The trigger to the next crisis will not be the same as the trigger to the last one, but there will be another crisis. So what we have here is the CEO of the very company that restricts your safe deposit holdings and wants you to put your financial assets into their bank deposit system telling you there will be another crisis. Of course, a majority of Americans believe the economy is doing good and over two thirds of the country believes that things will be even better a year from now. If you think things are great and warning signs are nothing but fear mongering, then we urge you to put everything you own into real estate, tech stocks and bank deposits because as we're sure you've been told, prices can only go up from here. If however, you have a feeling that something just isn't right, then you might consider making plans to prepare for the financial crisis that Jamie Dimon says is coming. So I don't I don't know the truth of this rumor. I don't know um, if that letter's really there. I, I didn't do the research. So if some of the members want to do that research, um, go out there and find out if this is a real story. It would not surprise me at all if this is a real story. So let's use this to segue into the Wealth Watchman article. Now this is one that, um, has been making the rounds here. You can see there's 33 comments. It was published on April 20th. This is, why is this bank stockpiling silver like there's no tomorrow? Snatching those bars up another day, another completely expected gold and silver comic smackdown. 
while we stacking warriors have done some of our best fighting during these past few months and years some of our critics have only grown louder on days like today that's okay let them preen and squawk all they want to it makes no difference to me after all there is so much going on behind the scenes which continues to point to silver being the place to be that the evidence is overwhelming at this stage case in point last week You'll remember that I mentioned over 11 million ounces of silver moved either in or out of the COMEX system within just five business days. A record to be sure, but there's more to the story than just the mere tonnage of silver that was transferred. What I didn't make mention of at that time was that a certain party was forcing the issue by raking in most of that 11 million ounce total. You see, a very prominent bank certainly agrees with silver stackers that silver is more important than ever. JP Morgan Chase, they're back. Yes, Old Faithful is back at it again. Of course, they never really left silver and they've been rigging it nonstop in the futures market, but for a while there, there were at least no admissions of newly stacked silver being made in their COMEX warehousing facilities. Yet after a 16-month period of dormancy within their COMEX warehouse vaults, these guys have returned with a vengeance. In fact, our old buddies at J.P. Morgan Chase not only see value in silver here, but they're currently standing for delivery in their own house account in such strong numbers that it commands our attention. Let me show you what I mean. Here's a breakdown of the comics' most recent silver deliveries to J.P. Morgan. April 7th, a million point one. April 8th, 1.2. The 9th, 900. Uh, the 10th, 1.2. The 14th, 1. The 15th, 1.1. 1.2. April 16th, 1.1. This is a huge bout of silver deliveries in such a short space of time. Now, let me uh, let me stop it here real quick and look at these deliveries. Okay, so one million ounces. Let's let's just talk about the physical. Forget about the paper. We don't care about that because the paper's all fake. The whole thing's going to burn up in a giant um, pile of money. But the one million ounces, that's something that's solid. We can get our minds around that. At $16, we're going to use 16 because they're smacking it down right now. At $16, one million ounces of silver at $16 is $16 million, right? How much is $16 million? Mm, that's nothing. So let's say that it's 10 million ounces. 10 million ounces. At $16, that's $160 million. That's nothing. Let's say it's 100 million ounces at $16. You do the math. Barely over a billion. So uh, you can see that when you look at the math here, uh, it doesn't matter how much they, they do in physical. The physical's not there. Uh, the U.S. only does 50 million. We saw... Yesterday, uh, sorry, the last video we saw that the Mint has talked about how they have to do special things to get over that 50 million because uh, it's just not being mined here. So let's continue. This is a huge bout of deliveries in such a short space of time. In fact, within the realm of Comics World, it's such an exceptionally large amount that it even creates quite a spike in the long term chart of JP Morgan's vault stockpile. Now, I'd never seen this before. This is fascinating. This is JP Morgan's vault stockpile. And you can see that it goes from uh, in 2012. Actually, that's interesting because it's uh, 2011 um, when the it, it kind of goes right to that point. Remember, May 2011 was the absolute top in silver, and you can see their vault inventories climbing right from that date up to that 60 million. Now, do they really have this silver? I don't know. That's what they say they have, um, but can you really believe anything they say? That's an interesting chart, though. All in all, J.P. Morgan has added over 8.3 million ounces of additional silver in just the past two weeks alone. Ted Butler has said that he believes most of the silver owed to J.P. Morgan after they stood for delivery last month. This is no isolated incident either, but part of an ongoing trend by this bank to acquire the single largest silver stockpile within the banking world. In fact, Mr. Butler also believes that J.P. Morgan has spent the last four years acquiring one of the largest hordes of silver in modern times. He believes this so strongly that he has put the possible, the current number of ounces in J.P. Morgan's coffers at several hundred million. 
Okay, well, let's just do the math. Uh, let's say it's 300 million. Uh, 300 million ounces times $16. Uh, that's four billion. What's the market cap of JP Morgan? 50 billion? Well, that's 10% of the market cap. Again, it's just pennies. Now, we can't know for sure if JP Morgan is the largest silver short in the S SLV or whether or not they're the Mr. Big, as he calls them, buying up many government silver coins. But if they are indeed active within the SLV shenanigans and if their accumulation there matches the same trend line in their comex vaults, then he could well be right that they currently have the largest commercial stockpile of silver on earth. Mm, I bet the Chinese have more. That's just a guess. Why though? Why after extricating itself from much of its silver shorts is JP Morgan Chase still bothering with buying tens or hundreds of millions of ounces of silver? Why after 18 months of calm would JP Morgan suddenly rush to take delivery of the maximum allowable silver ounces in a delivery month. Think about it. If silver is so plentiful and available in quantities that would allow the comics to give every investor a good delivery bar for a personal doorstop with silver to spare, then why would JP Morgan bother with such accumulation in the first place? Why bother creating such a vast stockpile if silver is so oversupplied? This is the question that no critic can answer. If silver was destined to go back to years of further losses, then why would the world's biggest insider continue to acquire a sure loser at high prices? They wouldn't. A reminder. Ted Butler, a man who I greatly respect, has said that he believes J.P. Morgan has acquired silver all this time for the mother load, the ultimate payout, as he believes they know that silver's price explosion is an eventual inevitability. That part I agree with him on. However, I disagree that JPM's end game, as well as the Fed and the U.S. Treasuries all along, was to simply score big on a silver explosion. I mean, these guys in D.C. issue trillions of dollars of bonds per year. J.P. Morgan in their secret money room moves around trillions of dollars per day. Do you really think they care whether or not they make 10, 20, or 50 billion dollars on a silver trade? Is that really why JP Morgan had to take on Bear Stearns short position in a shotgun wedding arranged by the Fed and the Treasury? No, hardly brothers. Remember, silver is the banking dragon's vulnerable spot. It is the pressure point knockout and thusly it has always been my belief the JP Morgan and the banking cartel doesn't rig silver and gold to make dollars. Rather, they rig silver and gold to make dollars possible. Without the rigging of silver and gold's price, the price rocket that would take place would torpedo world confidence in debt instruments, in inflation figures, and the state of the global market's health. Mr. Butler has wondered for several years now why JP Morgan hasn't just let silver rip once they had their short position as low as 8,000 to 10,000 contracts. The answer to that is the same reason why JP Morgan didn't run up gold's price after they acquired a Comex long contract corner. Some folks thought that when JP Morgan had acquired a long market corner in gold, roughly 8 million paper ounces, that surely they'd simply let gold skyrocket and pocket billions of dollars. Those same folks were perplexed when JP Morgan not only did not let gold skyrocket, but also continued to exit that long contract position with almost no profits to speak of. The real money to be made was never in the rigging of the price itself, but in the global monetary system that these banks own lock, stock, and barrel. The reason why I think Mr. Butler misses this point is because he doesn't understand silver's true importance as a monetary asset. Ted is, by his own admission, not a hard money advocate. Sorry, that one uh, messed up here. By his own mission, he, admission, he is not a hard money advocate. He doesn't believe in necessarily having gold and silver as money. To him, silver is just another commodity, just a crime in progress that he discovered and wants to bring to light, nothing more. What Diamond said, why though has JP Morgan's pace of silver stacking quickened of late? Perhaps it's because they know that the system, the real source of profit, is not long for this world. Recently, in a communication to JP Morgan shareholders, Jamie Diamond personally expressed Sorry about that. It keeps. I stopped the script. Uh, expressed that he felt 
it is likely that there will be a future crash in the world's most liquid instruments. And we already went over that quote. Conclusion, JP Morgan was tapped by the government to criminally rig the silver and gold prices, but not to simply make some profits, but rather to literally sustain the system itself. Since April 2011, JP Morgan has been one of Physical Silver's biggest fan as probably the world's largest stacker behind only the nation of India. This bank, having established its own comic system vaults, has now built the single largest stockpile of silver on the COMEX warehouse systems books. The dormancy period of roughly 16 months where the bank took in almost no new silver is now over. Remember that a profit on a silver spike would be a short-sighted one-time thing as the ensuing spike will literally kill their global debt Ponzi scheme. It would kill the goose that laid the golden egg. So it stands to reason that if JP Morgan has reached a point where it's looking to score big on a silver run-up, that's only because the system has itself run its course and there's nothing left to steal. As I've long stated, I expect the biggest gape of silver's price to only occur once their system is done. From their renewed substantial silver stacking and from Jamie Dimon's own admission that he expects some market turbulence in the world's most liquid markets, I think it's possible that the global economy situation has reached the critically terminal phase. The banking dragon always goes for the most crucial choke points on the field of battle. They occupy silver, gold, Bitcoin, etc. because these choke points are simply too important for them not to control. Butler has said that J.P. Morgan is the ultimate insider and that silver is as close as anything to following an insider insider trade as you'll ever have. I completely agree. I also believe that J.P. Morgan understands that the next time silver's short supply reaches critical levels, it will be in the midst of the greatest financial crisis that any living person will have witnessed. This renewed stacking in silver by this financial behemoth is a reminder that silver is of the utmost importance to the powers that be. And if J.P. Morgan Chase the most well-connected financial crooks on the planet, the insider of insiders, the very market execution arm of the Federal Reserve, finds it utterly necessary to take delivery of every last ounce of silver it can get its hands on, then so do I. Fantastic article from the Wealth Watchman. Um, it's, it's getting close. I don't know how close it is, but it's getting close. Uh, the action in these charts is insane. Uh, it's not renewing here. But uh, you can see on the accumulation distribution, the MACD is rolling over again on the long term, on the weekly. It may be, uh, I will just throw this out there, that it may be that JP Morgan is actually planning to do some kind of final takedown on silver and they actually are accumulating this gigantic reserve and stockpile to do that deed, the last and final takedown on silver. And if that's the case, it's gonna be the best stacking opportunity in history. And we'll talk to you next time.